tabula rasa is the phrase that is coming to mind. It's this, this white sheet, this blank slate. I feel that's where many of us are at right now. And if you're not, it's certainly a state that you can choose to tune into exactly when it's right for you to do so, exactly when you choose to. The trick is to be dropping out of all, <laughs> all, 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 all of your past paradigms, everything you thought you knew, everything you thought, all the energies you held on to, belief systems, narratives, feelings you are accustomed to holding. All of that is from your previous existence, your previous paradigm, and we can all drop out of that when we choose to and tune into the new state of tabula rasa. And we can fill in this blank space, this white light, the, the white space, we can fill it in with exactly whatever we choose to fill it in with. It's choosing to align with your sovereign creation of your own reality. If you're having trouble getting grounded, if you're feeling unbalanced and um, emotional and ungrounded, try one thing you can try if this resonates is to instead of trying to ground into the earth, of course, that can, is still an important thing for you to do um, if that's where you're resonating, but you can try grounding into your own heart space because as the next waves, as you work through the next waves, you're gonna be finding yourself in states of consciousness where you're not really on the earth anymore. You're not in the 3D construct the way you used to be. Um, even if you still wake up in the morning and drink your coffee and take care of your family the way you used to, you're not really here the way you used to be. And grounding into the earth might not always, every day, work for you the way it used to. So grounding into your own heart center and Imagine the white light, the white light expanding, 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 glowing, 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 emanating from your own heart, like the light of source itself flowing out of your own heart, filling up the, the space of your body and expand it out from there. Can you fill up your whole room? Can you fill up your whole house? Can you fill up your whole town, the whole city, the whole earth, the whole galaxy? How far can you hold the, the white light? How far can it flow out of you? And that's how you can create this blank space, this new reality, this completely fresh, completely new paradigm for you to fill up. Um, it's like projecting the white space out in front of you. And you do that by releasing, releasing the light of source that is inside of you. It's, it's there just waiting, just waiting for you to relax and let it out. And then you become the sole creator of your own reality. <laughs> you are worthy. Aim for what you want and believe in yourself. You might be feeling that the kind of energy I was just describing somehow, some way is not for you. <laughs> that somehow you're not experienced enough or you don't have the gifts enough or you're not high frequency enough or whatever whatever the narrative is you are telling yourself about yourself dropping out of that entirely because you are worthy and the only thing holding you back is a lack of self-belief um, so that is why it's important to clear out all of your previous thought paradigms because they are the things holding you back from remembering remembering your own magnificence yeah <laughs> Remember, love is the key. Love what you have in your life right now.
using the, the light that flows out of you, the, the light that comes from your own spark. Using the light to love. I think you guys can feel what I mean. You can use the light to love. The, like the love and the light, they're two different human words that we're using for the same principle, the same energy. Let it flow, let it flow out of you. <laughs> Letting go of a fixed plan. Allow for spontaneity and growth. This era of oh, constant change, constant change, constant change. Even remembering that when you, or if you create a reality, if you fill in your white space, if you cut, like draw in your slate with things that you don't, actually want <laughs> maybe you were working through something maybe you ran into some like shadow phantom karma some phantom karma something you thought was something repeating from your past and really that thing that you thought that was the past repeating itself wasn't the past wasn't going to repeat itself because you're in a new energy now you're in a whole new paradigm now but it's like a phantom a ghost of the past and it's coming up so you can release it one last time so you can fully dissolve that and move on from it but if you you know made the mistake there aren't any mistakes but <laughs> Maybe you engaged in a looping activity where you engaged the phantom karma and you engaged the thing from the past and then you're like, oh crap, I wish I hadn't have done that. <laughs> That's okay. You can immediately, once again, tune back into the white space to the blank slate and let go of everything that you just did that you thought might have been a mistake and start fresh again. And you can do this. <laughs> as many times as you want, as many times as you need to, as many times as you choose to. Trying, letting go, erasing, and starting again. It's not so much that your life is a canvas, it's more like your life is a whiteboard, right? Because you can erase it, you can erase easily, you can easily erase whatever you drew in and start again. You can choose again choose again ten of stones home this this card is beautiful look it's this stone archway you have been underground we've all been underground we've been inside the earth we've been in the earth system right and here is the portal where you're looking up looking out looking to this world tree look at it look at this world tree you're coming to the very very end of the tunnel and outside it is bright and fresh and new massive <laughs> massive completion coming to the end of the tunnel and what's outside the tunnel when um, I feel like some of you are standing in the doorway. Some of us, some of us are standing in the doorway, this archway, unsure if you should take the next step. And of course, you always get to decide you can take the next step whenever you choose to, or you can linger in the doorway for as long as you choose to. But if it's fear of moving through the doorway that's holding you back, just don't entertain the fear. Just step through. If it looks like the door is closed, if you ever see a door and you know you can feel that you're meant to go through the door, but you can't get the door open. Maybe you're grabbing the doorknob and you're pulling it and you can't get the door open. Just walk through the door. <laughs> Literally through the door. You might see doors, and it can be any kind of a door, anything that represents a door to you. And if you feel like you can't pass through the door, 
stop trying to open the door. Just remember that the door isn't really there and that you just need to pass right on through it. Ten of vessels, ten of cups. Look at this water, <laughs> this beautiful, beautiful waterfall gushing, overflowing, filling up all of your vessels, filling up all of your cups. <sighs> Since I just said filling up all of your vessels, I mean, yes, this is the Ten of Cups representing, you know, happiness and home and soul family. And I mean, a ten of, ten of Stones, which would be, you know, Ten of Earth Energy, Ten of Pentacles, <laughs> followed by the Ten of Cups, two of the best cards, right? But these particular representations in this Wildwood Tarot deck have special meanings to me. And one I didn't never picked up on before is how this is the Ten of Vessels, right? What does the word vessels make you think? To me, it reminded me immediately of, you know, our human vessels, our human vessels. And this river, to me, is representing your consciousness, your consciousness, and how your consciousness fills up not just one vessel. This isn't just you, your one singular human vessel. This is all. I mean, here we have ten vessels, but really it's hundreds or thousands or millions or who knows, right? Your quantum vessels, all of your vessels, all of them, all of them in all of your quantum lives and all of your parallel lives, your one consciousness is flowing to fill up all of them. You can expand this out to whatever level is useful for you. You can think of this as you and all of your past lives all being filled up by the river of one consciousness. You can think of this as you and all of your parallel lives, all of your quantum lives. Um, or you can take it all the way out to, you know, the level of source where you remember that everything that is, all that is, is filled up by the same singular river of consciousness. And you can tune into that singular river of consciousness in all of its vessels, in all of its guises. The seer, this is the second major arcana. This would be the high priestess in another deck. <laughs> Here you are, staff in hand, hand outstretched, peering into the mirror. Seeing in the mirror your own reflection but it's not just you that is being reflected. When you see your reflection, you might see other people, other beings, other places, um, geometric shapes that make no sense. Whatever it is that you see when you peer into the mirror and what, whatever the mirror is to you. A bowl filled with water for scrying. The bathroom mirror while you're brushing your teeth. The the pond um, underneath your car's tire, right? The puddle, the puddle underneath your car's tire. Um, the reflection that you catch out of someone's sunglasses when you look at them in the face. Um, everything, everything that you see, Literally, in the day, when you wake up, everything that you see, eyes open or eyes closed, everything that you see, <laughs> physical eyes, non-physical eyes, whatever, everything that comes into your consciousness, everything that comes into your awareness, this includes all of your senses as well, not just your sight. It is all, every single bit of it is the universe communicating with you. There's, there's nothing that you perceive that is not a communication from the universe. And... It's important if you want to see the purest reflection of yourself, if you want to perceive that which is only your highest reflection, your most joyful um, reflection, your most benevolent exp reflection, if you want your experience of your reality to be the most <laughs> 
pleasant, the most high frequency, the most full of love. If you want the best feeling life, You're invited to tune into the, 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 the blank slate, the tabula rasa, the white space, the white light, because then you will only receive the reflections that are those high frequency reflections. If you are seeing nightmares in the looking glass, if you are seeing things that are not fun, that are not pleasant, if you're seeing things that you're not, <laughs> that you don't want to keep seeing, um, there's an invitation to pay attention to your your filter. How is it that you are filtering or distorting the light that is being reflected back at you? Every time you have an experience that is <laughs> not filled with light. It's only because there is a structure in your filter, <laughs> a structure in your perception of reality that is casting that shadow. Like, like you're making shadow puppets, <laughs> like, like exactly like you're making shadow puppets on the wall of a cave. So just pay attention and curate the kind of shadow puppets that you are creating. Bottom of the deck, rejecting emotion, zeta reticuli. This is what you're moving away from, okay? This is that <laughs> very, the point in the, the zeta's evolution where they had felt that their emotions and their intuition were the things that had caused all of their pains and all of their sufferings so they completely rejected their own emotions and attempted to become entirely left-brained entirely rational entirely technologically driven and that didn't work out for them that almost made them go extinct and i have definitely had this experience in this life for for many years i ex existed existed in this kind of state and yeah, I also repeated this Zeta-like story of discovering that repressing your emotions and rejecting your emotions never, never, never gets you anywhere that you want to be. That's what you're moving away from. This is the energy of, of the past of, that you're releasing, that you're letting go of. Instead, moving into this feeling of safety and diversity. Melting pot earth. <laughs> the melting pot earth. Feeling okay sitting in a room full of not just diverse opinions, not just diverse cultures, but also diverse feelings. Um, and I think also um, being okay with the diverse feelings within yourself. If you have feelings that are coming up and, you know, whether they're coming through as 
phantom karma, you know, that thing that you don't want to have to work through again, that you don't want to see again. Um, just allowing it to come up, observe it and let it go, right? Um, if you're seeing reflections in the mirror that you don't want to be experiencing again, allowing yourself to just observe them and then let go of the construct that is creating that shadow. Um, but well, those, whether they're unpleasant people or unpleasant emotions, whatever they are, um, even dropping out of unlabeling, labeling them and labeling them as unpleasant, right? It's just that we, this linear language, this linear way of thinking doesn't really have good ways of describing, um, non-duality, non-duality, non-dual concepts. We don't really have good words for that. And we're talking here in a 3D linear equation and we are all in the vortex of the moment, <laughs> in the vortex of this moment, tuning into states of consciousness that are non-linear. All of this is about leaving linearity behind, right? Leaving the linear tunnels of the cave beneath the earth, leaving behind the linear experience of one life at a time or one moment at a time, um, returning to the cosmic flow, the returning to the, the cosmic ocean, returning into the quantum consciousness of non-linearity, <laughs> non-linearity, turning into your feminine half, your intuition on a completely new level of non-linearity, melting pot, seeing everything from a non-linear perspective because you're tuning into the light of awareness, Orion light. I don't know about you guys, but I have been experiencing a massive purge, um, like a, a really intense clearing of karmic patterns from Orion and even from before Orion um, in the Lyran and Vagan star systems. Um, just for anybody who isn't, so, who doesn't, who hasn't heard this before, the Lyrans were the ones who colonized the Vagan star system and then both the Lyrans and the Vagans went on to colonize the Orion star system and there was this, this tension between outward expansion and inward reflection. Um, the vegan, the vegans were the, almost like Jedi, almost like Jedi. I've been uh, remembering a life where I was essentially a vegan Jedi and many, 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 many of the mystical traditions, the mystery schools, the spiritual traditions on earth, the ones that are the most um, non-linear come from the ancient vegan spiritual traditions. And this Orion light represents the phase of Orion consciousness where dark and light, expansion, external expansion and inward reflection, when the two different sides of the polarity game came together and created a third idea, a new way. They created the enlightened, their own enlightened consciousness where everything was fused back together into a third brand new thing. It's almost like creating a child, but it's instead of like mother and father and then biologically creating a third child, it's, you know, two types of consciousness coming together and creating a higher consciousness. <sighs> Fusing inside of yourself the different dualities of your own consciousness. And this is sitting, I can't help but notice how this is sitting right below this 10 of vessels with your quantum consciousness. Some of you are really, really getting ready to synchronize with your parallel selves on a new level. Of course, your higher self, which contains all of your, you know, 
physical parallel selves that already exists. The network is already created. It is already done. It is already there in, you know, our linear future, but <laughs> you are getting to have the experience of creating it, having moments where you can feel, where you can sense and perceive, or just know that your other selves are there with you, you know? Um, and they're not out there. They're not somewhere else. They are right, right inside of you. They are, it can almost feel like they're superimposed right on top of you and you can feel them and they are there. The dreams you have when you're sleeping, the dreams you have when you are in, in your own, in your body that you know right now and you are in weird versions of your life. Maybe it's some weird dream version of your hometown or it's a dream where you're working at a different job or you live in a different house or it's 10 years in the future or 40 years in the future and everything is weird but it seems somehow so real, so real, so vivid and so real. It's because you're actually visiting. <laughs> you're visiting your, your parallel lives. You're visiting different reflections of your own consciousness and you're starting to be able to move through the quantum tunnels. It's, I just keep looking at this card there. Imagine inside the cave, inside the earth, there are tunnels, tunnel systems, cave systems underneath the earth and little doorways take you off to different passes, passageways. You can travel between your own parallel lives that way, imagining the quantum tunnel and then seeing different balls of light, spheres of light that are your different lives. Um, they might look like, you know, balls of light out in the void, or they might look like holes in a tunnel. Same thing, doesn't really matter. And you could just zoom into the light, zoom into the light, and then you can peek in. <laughs> you can peek in to see what you're doing in that life. And the more you travel between your different lives, the stronger the network becomes, and you're actually creating your you know, what we would call on a linear level, creating your parallel processing network where you are consciously aware of living multiple different lives at the same time. All of this is helping you tune into unconditional love, unconditional love. Here we have this rainbow consciousness. I love that this isn't even like, what is this, right? What What is this image? <laughs> This reminds me of something I saw the other day when where I don't remember where it was. Somebody had two pictures. One was a spiral. One was a spiral and the other one was a scribble. And the spiral was labeled linear and the scribble was labeled nonlinear. That really hit me. That really struck home for me because I had actually been imagining a spiral being a representation of non-linearity because I thought like a line is linear or like a staircase is linear or something like that. And a spiral, that felt non-linear to me. And when I realized, no, I mean, a spiral is still a linear experience. Um, it's all smooth. It's all even. It's all slowly spiraling out and out and out. And a scribble loops around, loops around, loops around and goes everywhere, goes everywhere. So be open to your understanding, your experience of what non-linearity is. Be prepared for that to shift and expand and get weirder and weirder and weirder because when we are in our linear minds, it's incredibly difficult to even imagine what non-linearity even is. Of course, some people like are just naturally, you know, this has even been for hundreds of years on the planet. Some people are just na more naturally, n more non-linear, right? They're more of like a chaotic system. Um, and for them, the shift into non-linearity is gonna go a little easier. For those of us, you know, if you're like me, I've had a very linear mind um, and letting that unwind and experience the scribbling effect of non-linearity is very, very strange and will take some acclimating. So don't be <laughs> surprised if your journey takes you all over the place, all over the place. Not, not, a, not a staircase, not a spiral, but a scribble. <laughs> and grounding, grounding back into your heart center because 
grounding into your heart center, that's the only way, that's how you anchor in this non-linear flood of consciousness. You need to anchor into your heart center because if you try to anchor into the earth even, <laughs> as much as we love grounding into the earth, that's one of the things we have depended on and known and loved. If we anchor, if we try to anchor into the earth when we're tuning into our non-linear state of consciousness, we're, fracture, we're actually fracturing ourselves because we're trying to, if we have a million parallel lives um, and then we're trying to ground into the earth, we have, <laughs> We're splintering, we're fracturing, we're actually sending our consciousness away from the center of our own consciousness. Uh, especially if you have, you guys all have lives on different planets and then so you're anchoring into all of these different things. And I think we will learn, we will learn how to do that more effectively. We will learn how to, that, that'll be, that'll be a, a later stage in our growth, in our evolution, where we learn to expand out to that level when we can actually contain all of our different consciousnesses on a level like where it's actually grounded and contained but i think first before we get to that like outward expansion grounding into all of our different planets for example and all of the different expressions of those different planets all of those millions of fractals of our own consciousness before we get to that state i think uh, I think we need to first anchor into our own unified heart space, our own unified heart chakra, if you will, of all of your different parallel selves, of all of your different quantum states, anchoring into your own heart. <sighs> because that way you can travel through the multidimensional expression of your consciousness, you can travel through the void, you can travel through the dimensions, you can travel to different universes even, you can travel anywhere, you can create anything, and you will never be lost, you will never be untethered, you will never be scared, you will never be alone, you will never have anything but wholeness and love if you anchor into your own heart center you, you this is this is like so important we we need to anchor into our own heart center and ground into our own heart center so that all of the expressions of our non-linear consciousness have a place to meet have a place to meet and so that we can travel <laughs> so that we can travel the quantum without getting pulled apart and without getting lost Yeah, and th this is an important initiation um, for us as we, you know, as we ascend, if if you want to call it that, as we, as we continue to shift our consciousness, we need to be anchored into only our own selves. And we're going to be having experiences that will help us do that. And if you find yourself being triggered by other people or just irritated at other people or suddenly um, a person or an energy you used to love and used to resonate with is suddenly you're just kind of like I don't know if I want to hang out with that energy anymore all of that is actually it, it might feel like a breakdown it might feel like breakups even for some people it might feel like a severing or a pulling apart um, but those experiences are actually benevolent and for our highest good because they are uh, here to help us and to teach us anchor into our own heart center, our own heart center. So there's an opportunity for us to really hold neutrality and to hold really even love and gratitude and optimism for all of the pulling apart and all the separating experiences that we might have because they are actually just tuning us back into our own heart center so that we have, we can literally create a point of gravity for our quantum consciousness <laughs> and that will help us hold hold the light and hold the unconditional love more of the time more of the time so <sighs> i think i'm gonna leave you guys there i love you guys so much i'll talk to you later